We're back on top of the mountain for day two and the sun's out and the wind has not quit. How come you're dressed like an Eskimo? Today's the first day of April. It's five degrees cooler and the wind is 27 degrees colder. All right, so uh, task, your method in. <laughs> task at hand today, what we got like 2,200 feet of trenches to dig? Roughly. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, here is the plan. Here's what we're gonna to tackle today. Captain Kleeman was here yesterday. I think he covered a lot of this on his channel. But if you guys can see down over the hill there, he started digging the electric trench up the hill. After I got done with the basement, I actually put the trenching bucket on the Volvo and uh, made it a little bit farther. But today, the electric company's gonna be here at any time. So we gotta finish this electric trench up. Then the plumber's coming tomorrow to run the water line. So I think it's a good old fashioned divide and conquer. Yep, but you remember the radios today. I did remember the radios today. Which is I what? think I'm going to give you the uh, privilege of running the new Hyundai today. You know what's even better? It's got a heated cab. It does have a heated cab. So I'm so. not going to be outside freezing while you're I'm inside curious to, warm. Uh, I've ran it for a while now. Captain Clemens ran it for a while. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on it. So uh, once you go down, get the Hyundai, come up here and dig the square box of the transformer. Okay. I'm going to hop in the Volvo, finish the way up the hill, and hopefully we get that done before the electric company shows up. Let's get it. All right, guys, I don't mean, I promise I don't mean to be a crybaby, but wowzers, that wind is absolutely brutal out there. I'm not a big guy about cabs on equipment, but I think if I had to be on an open cab machine today, I think I'd just quit and go home, which is a real shame because it's a beautiful day. But for you guys that are new to the channel and haven't seen this attachment, this is actually one of my custom built buckets. We call it our trenching bucket. I have used it before to, uh, I have used it before for some stump removal, some stuff like that. But basically, it is uh, 10 inches wide and about 60 inches tall, and it's purpose built for tasks just like this, like the long runs of electric lines and long runs of uh, water lines. Uh, you guys know I built the water line plow. Uh, they want two inch water line on this, so I cannot use the plow on this job. And this dirt is extremely, extremely hard. I'm not for sure if I could plow this if I wanted to. Um, as far as a trencher goes on this, I'm not saying you couldn't trench this, but it's going to be an expensive trencher. This, um, I don't know if you guys can see that dirt. It looks like sand coming out of there, but it's basically. See how it's gray down there at the bottom? It's it's almost like a really hard, we're basically digging through the same stuff we dug through up here at the basement. It's like a layer of really fine sandstone. It's extremely hard. This bucket does seem to get through it. And the other issue you're gonna have a trencher on this hill is just the absolute terrain. I don't know how well it shows up on camera down there, but it is, uh, it is steep. It's got wet spots in it. Uh, just a lot of different things going on there. So, in our area for what we do, this bucket has proved to work very well. That is rock right there. We're getting it. I don't know if you guys can see it just kind of turns that thing into sand. The other thing about this is it's not really a scoop and dump type bucket it's more of a drag and rip type bucket like it's got dirt stuck in it right there I don't care about that don't affect me at all uh, most of the times you guys see whenever I started on this you just kind of drag it to you and keep going back and forth and that's how you can really make really make some good time with it I've kind of in a little bit of a hurry here I need to make sure I stay ahead of the electric company but there we get digging on the uh, Digging on the water line here in a minute, I'll get you guys some good uh, good shots of it. I wish, I wish I could find a way to show you guys how brutal that wind feels out there today. I mean, I thought it was going to be a nice day here, but it has proved to be anything but. You guys see right here how I'm not, not dumping that dirt off the side. I just bring it back and flick it, and then go right back for another one. That's why we call it more of a knife than a bucket. 
once you kind of get the technique figured out with it, especially in this hard ground, it definitely works. Definitely works well. Matt's on the Hyundai heading up the hill. You're gonna be able to get on the driveway, all right? I'm actually gonna stay beside the driveway and go up to this next water bar and hop up on it right there. I don't want to tear up this uh, nice, pretty pitch you have on the side here. 10-4, how's the heat work? Anyways, let me get, uh, get this electric line dug up through here. Uh, I need to make sure I stay ahead of the electric company because whenever they show up, we got a pretty good electric company. You guys have seen them on the channel in the past. They'll show up with several guys and they're not gonna they're not gonna mess around. They're gonna get this in and then we gotta take off on the on the water line. So hammer down. Alright guys, we finally made it to the top of the hill. Matt had a little pad here and dug out and I just I kinda destroyed your hole there, buddy. Definitely destroyed the hole there, man. <laughs> hey, this is a family channel. I'm gonna let him let him come back up there and scratch that out a little bit. I didn't catch any of that. I was talking to the wrong camera, the wrong butt. <laughs> I get confused and I got multiple stuff going on. You just got there with me. You gotta show us the smooth operating skills of the Hyundai. You're too deep. Come up. Too deep. Too deep. You don't hear that very often. You're too deep. Machine may be smooth. I'm not very sure about the operator. 100% not the machine. That's what I said on my channel too. All right, make it look pretty. So that trench comes up the hill. This is going to be a high voltage line, so it's got to be 42 inches deep. And then right here, they will set a transformer box. So they basically want a two by five pad uh, dug about 16 inches deep. I'll try to get some video of that here in a little bit, but it'll basically be sitting there. Um, I think we've got a few videos. My octane. What's that? Too much octane. I'll turn the throttle now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I got a couple of videos of sitting these on the channel before. Uh, but basically, that transformer will step that down to uh, 220 or what we call secondary. And then once the house is built, there'll be a secondary line that has to be 32 inches deep. It'll go from here over to the basement we dug over there yesterday. So. Looks like I'm going to have to hop out and help Matt here on the struggle bus uh, pretty this up here a little bit. So let's do that and then we're going to tie into digging the water line. The fiber optic guys are here. Um, the fiber optic, so we are so lucky around here. We have some awesome rural utilities. Uh, PSCI, Perry Spencer Communications, they're running the fiber optic line with the electric line. The electric company and the fiber optic people they are our partners now so now that they're partners they're allowed to share ditches i don't know how that works i just dig ditches and let them do what they want to do so they've already got the fiber line in the ditch rec will be here in a little bit they'll put the electric line in the ditch and then we'll dig a separate water line that'll be in a separate ditch over there so let me go help matt out here and then we'll tie to the water line hello can i help you sir Non-operators in service. <laughs> <laughs> you want in here? Just, just five minutes, please. Just, five minutes? Just five I bet minutes. you it takes you two. Just five. Hey, watch that camera. Ha-ha, <laughs> a little different view inside this little girl. Check her out. I like it. I'm sorry if the wind chill's dirty, guys. It is, if I mention how cold it is out there yet, it is cold. So you guys are just gonna have to bear with me here for a second. Let's walk up in here. Actually, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put the blade. I put the blade behind us. It's always easier to dig a level hole if the machine itself is level. Operating one on one. So we're going to use the blade to our advantage. Pull up here, level ourselves up. This thing has got absolutely incredible reach on it. Look at that. And it's incredibly smooth. Impressive. Matt's telling me I'm telling me I'm good. I know I'm good. You don't have to tell me I'm good. I was 
simply telling you the dimensions were good. Oh my bad, I was a little confused. You typically are, and you're uh, six inches too deep, which I know you're definitely not used to in life. Well, that's interesting, is I filled four inches in. Try to tell me it was too deep, you argue with me. guys that should do the trick for them they don't like what they see when they get here we can always tweak it a little bit because we will still be here but that should that should get them in there look at that nice like it all right we got all kinds of action going around here we got rock trucks rolling in left and right getting in preparation for the basement driveway's holding up good we got our transformer pad built in here that's all good so basically that high voltage line will come up and then it'll end up underneath this box and uh, that's probably as far as i'm going to go with that for now fiber optic guys got their stuff all ran so i think what we're going to do at this point is we're going to start going back down the hill uh, in preparation for the water line and i uh, got the plumber coming in here tomorrow so need to get him all make sure he's ready to go so uh, let's do it. Oh, our model Mac, man. You should have heard that beast pulling the hill. Love ammo trucks. Awesome ammo trucks. All right, I don't know how much you guys can see because that sun is absolutely blaring in the windshield there. And uh, as you guys can tell, it's probably not as clean as what it should be, but. Uh, I got an age-old question for you guys. I'm curious what your opinion is on this. So, I don't know, grade never shows up on camera very well. It's always hard to tell how steep stuff is. But this is a pretty pretty decent little hill we're digging on here. And we dig the, dug the electric line mostly because of happenstance yesterday. We didn't really have a choice. We started at the bottom and dug to the top. Well, now that I'm on the top, I'm going to start at the top and dig back to the bottom down in the water line now. I don't have to go quite as deep with the water line. The water line only has to be about 30 inches deep with the electric line need to be 42 to 48. So that does make a little bit of a difference, but I think it's easier to start at the top and dig to the bottom. Mostly because the dirt in the trench rolls down to you instead of rolls away from you. But that's just my random thought. Hey, look at there. REC's here. Boy, we got that trench dug just in time. So, yeah. Anyways, kind of curious what your guys' thoughts are. You prefer to start at the top and work your way to the bottom? Start at the bottom, work your way to the top? Or does it even really matter? It may not even matter. I'm not going to clump of dirt off air for it ends up in there and then I'm digging it out with the shovel later because that wouldn't be any fun. Let me uh let me catch up with REC here, see what their see what their plans are. Then we'll get a little bit of video of the wire going in. And then I promise you before the day's over, I'm gonna get you some video of the trench and bucket in action. I don't know if you guys can see up through there, but it does what I think to be just a wonderful, wonderful job. You guys can see all the way down over the hill there. You can see the bucket trucks are rolled in. They're getting set up to do their thing, so that's always good. Oh, they brought their buggy. They're getting fancy today. Got a four-seater. Maybe I can get a ride. All right, guys, back up here on top. This is the meter base here. It's going to be the permanent meter base. And there's a disconnect that's going to go to the barn and a disconnect that's going to go to their house. Uh, so I got to dig a small trench that goes from this transformer pad over to this uh, over to this box right here, so they can get get their power from the transformer into that meter base. And then that should also allow them to have some temporary power up here uh, for the job site, as far as working here. So 
We're not going to do anything too extremely fancy here. Just get these guys enough, enough room to get their wire in here and do what they need to do, and they should be good to go. They said everything else looked pretty good, so I love it when a plan comes together. Question is, are you enough of a man to get that to the bottom of the hill? I hold the camera, you pull it. <laughs> yeah, I like my job better, Ryan. All right, you make me feel bad. I'll jump in and help. This is video evidence. I actually did something, see? I'm just gonna make you touch the fence first to see if it's hot. Started it, it didn't matter where we were. It was, it, it was always off. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I caught up with that pretty quick. They gave up on manual labor. Got the old uh, the boat out. How far do you think that is up there, Kevin? 850 feet. That's your number and you're sticking to it, huh? <laughs> Job calls for 950. 40 foot up the post. It's so more. It's probably more, about 900 feet. It's more than 20 feet, I'll tell you that much. Watch it here, make sure it don't catch the corner of the building and damage anything. That wouldn't be good. I think we're gonna make her though. All right, that was a success. So now we'll get the uh, get the water flopped over in the hole and what they'll have me do is they'll have me backfill it basically uh, about a foot and then we'll come back down through there and run some, uh, run some caution tape on it. So we'll have a marker in there and we'll be good to go all right guys what i'm doing they've got their wire down in the trench now they're happy with all that so i'm gonna go back and put uh i'm gonna go back and put about a foot of dirt over top of it a foot to 18 inches of dirt over top of it and then at that point they'll come down through there and put red marker tape so hopefully in theory the thought process is that somebody comes through here digging later and they don't know this wire is here they see that red marking, that red warning tape before they hit the actual high voltage power line because that would not be good. So nothing really fancy or extreme about this. Just getting a little bit of cover on it. So the tape is above the wire. And then from there, after the tape's in, we'll uh, backfill the rest of it completely. I brought my big smooth face bucket for backfilling. I think it'll definitely come in handy, but this will work because it's on the machine and the, uh, it's on the machine and I don't feel like walking to the top of the hill to get the other one.
got my system on this guys i'm kind of going up here ahead of me take the bucket knock just enough dirt in there to kind of fill in the trench then as i track forward i'll swing around behind me hang on hold on something this is quite the hillside i know it probably don't show up on camera but it is uh it's quite the hillside up through here so i'll do that ahead of me as I spin around here, a little shy on dirt right there. I spin around here, I'll just kind of take the bucket, make sure there's no big, uh, big clumps, make sure it's pretty even. And we'll work our way on up the hill. Just that simple. Be a little bit more careful here as I've already got the water line trench dug over. I don't want to knock any excess into it. Kind of hanging the butt, but it's a necessary evil if anybody wants to dig here later. There's a good example. I don't know if you guys can see. We got a couple big, uh, big clumps of grass in there. If we don't do something with that, the tape won't get down there where it's at or where it needs to be. Perfect. There's a fence right here that divides me from Matt. Matt's down there in the Hyundai. He's uh, you're catching up with me. You hit high gear. I was giving him a hard time. Don't tell me to go faster. <laughs> I did. I didn't think you actually had it in you to do it, though. You may beat me. The million dollar question is, do you guys know which wire goes where? No, but you find out when you put the fuse in. <laughs> That's the ultimate test, huh? Oh, yeah. So. Alrighty, guys. I got the thing partially backfilled. That spot right there. The rest of it looks pretty good, though. Look at that. We'll help them get the tape down in the ditch there, and then we'll come back and finish back filling this the rest of the way. Be good to go. Put a little dirt on there to hold it down. We're in a little low spot there. Going to work great. All right, we're about as far as we can go with the electric. You see, we got our partially backfilled. They got their tape in there. Everything's good there. I've actually got the water line dug down the hill to here or through the fence. Uh, Aaron actually showed up, so he's uh, let's call it let's call it attempting to backfill. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I mean, he's putting dirt in the ditch, so I guess technically it's backfilling. I wouldn't call it pretty by any stretch of the imagination, but he is getting some dirt in the hole. So what we're going to do, we're going to hop back in the Hyundai here, and we need to go down to the road. Now that we've got that much of it backfilled, we need to go down to the road and uh, expose the tap coming out of the water meter. Um, that way we kind of know where we're going, and, well... Hope they don't take this the wrong way. Somebody's gonna bust the water line. I just seen it be me and not somebody else. So we're gonna go down there, expose the tap, get it good to go. And then uh, Mac can continue digging with this machine and putting some footages in the ground. And I'll uh, keep digging with the other machine. Hopefully, hopefully if everything goes as planned, we'll meet in the middle somewhere. That's kind of the plan. Got another load of uh, rock going up the hill over there, you see it? attempting to backfill. All kinds of action around here. Alright, you guys can see right there is the water meter and they've got a stub coming out of it where the water line needs to hook onto and the plumber gets here tomorrow. He'll tie onto it. So basically what we gotta do 
is dig down and find that connection for him so that way he can take off. We're going to do that with the two foot bucket here on the Hyundai machine because he's got to set a valve box and then he's got to turn around and set a regulator because there's like, I don't know, close to 200 pounds of water pressure here. So we're going to dig for probably five or six feet with a two foot bucket, get everything uncovered, make sure we're good to go, and then we'll come back and uh, switch over to the trenching bucket and go back on, on up the hill and tie into what we we're doing. So hopefully we don't have Old Faithful here. I can clean that off a little bit and see where we're at. Last couple of scoops here. Hopefully we don't find an old water line that's still connected. Still nothing but clay. All right, hopefully this is gonna be the last scoop that's needed. Get a little water out of there and that should get us. Let's see. You're good. How, how did I end up the one with muddy boots? <clears throat> because you're the one who kept the uh, spade shovel at your house and you only left us with a flat <laughs> shovel. <laughs> Look, we found it. There it is. We did find it. Right there. Right where somebody left it. Are you done complaining yet, flat shovel boy? Nope. I think it's time to switch machines from here and up the hill we'll go. Okie dokie. All right guys, slowly continuing to work our way down the hill. I've got my trench here. We've actually got to tee in a water line to head to that camper over there. Matt's been working on that line with the Hyundai. So basically what we did here is I dug down past him. I'm just gonna let him dig up to me. We'll probably have to clean out some crumbs there a little bit, but uh, we're getting close. Aaron's still up there backfilling, but basically right there where the horses are at is where the water meter's at. So I'm gonna keep on a trucking on that way and we're gonna call this thing good sooner rather than later
right guys dilemma on hand as we hit an unmarked water line it's not a city water line it's a gravity feed line that we cannot turn off so what's next plan solution tape? is electrical tape on a shovel all right go fast you ready hope it works i don't want to get wet go for it that would have worked pretty good if our if it wasn't cut right there it's leaking around our cut yeah all right let's cut it off and do take two well boys if our uh, shovel handle wasn't cracked i think we would have got her definitely would have got her. <laughs> the electrical tape is holding well that will definitely slow her down until the uh plumber gets here in the morning the pressure is definitely penetrating the crack yeah 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 <laughs> so. but uh yeah that's where we're going to leave her at for now until the plumber gets here i'm not going to dig that last little bit uh, down to the meter it's only about 20 feet because i don't want to flood him out down there at the meter base and make him any more of a mess than what we've already got so uh we'll see you guys in the morning all right guys we are back at it bright and early this morning the good news is the wind has finally quit the bad news is the hole is filled up with water so we're bailing a little bit of water out here first thing this morning hopefully we're gonna make a connection here at the uh Next here at the meter, then run this pipe on up the hill. I'm going to dump the dirt in the ditch. Just going to dump the wood in the ditch. Sir, I'm going to leave you alone to play in the mud. We're going to go finish ditching for you. Timber. You have fun down there. Yeah. He's going to have a blast. His first experience of the day was, oh, I have a hole in my boot. Yeah, I, know what he said. <laughs> I showed up. I said, Todd, how it's going? He said, not good. I've already got wet feet. <laughs> oh. All right, we're going to leave Todd alone there. We got to go over, and there's one little spur that crosses the driveway up here and uh we didn't want to dig it yesterday with all the traffic coming in and out so we're going to dig it this morning take the shovel there sir that's what i was looking for i thought it was over there we're going to dig it there this morning and uh get the pipe in it pretty quick so uh we can get it filled back in so we can get the road back open and then we'll probably take on up the, up the hill man hey matt what? no wind i know it but since you said it, it's going to start. I know. It's like the first time we've worked here. We haven't had any wind. Agreed. Don't jinx it, right? Okay. All right. We've got to get out of the horse arena and miss all the power lines. And over yonder we go. Let's see how well this works out. Whenever Matt had some time to kill yesterday, he dug up underneath the fence here with the other machine. I'm hoping I can tie into his trench here we go the other way we don't have a whole lot of shovel work underneath that fence we've only got to go about uh maybe 60 feet behind me but my trench is smaller than yours. Yes, it is. You're pretty close there. Thirty-four. Can we get up underneath that fence a little better? Huh? Can we get up underneath that fence a little better? Come 
we got to go from here i'll spin around and we're going to go to that little bird house right there uh, eventually that's where they're going to end up having a permanent camping spot so i just want some water over there for the camper you guys see hydrants there now that's actually the line we hit yesterday there's a gravity feed line out of this pond up here that uh, they use to water the cattle the water they're using for the camper right now i am not 100 percent sure where it comes from it may be off the meat of this old house but they're going to abandon that line all right we have dug as far as we can dig with the trench and knife so basically we're going to switch over to the hyundai here Watch out for the bird feeder, don't want to take out the bird house. We got to do a little pit here on the end. Uh, that one they can, they got set two. I think they're going to put a regulator pit and a shut off pit. He's about five or six feet, two feet wide. Give him a little bit of room to work here. The exception of one small trench at the top of the hill going to the new house. This should pretty much be the end of the dig, and then we switch over to back field. It's amazing, you know, that Volvo's got some unbelievable visibility. But this thing is incredible. I don't know how to explain it. Hopefully it shows up on camera. There's no slouch when it comes to digging power either. You want to take a shovel and bust that little uh, berm out there? Switch back over to the old Volvo here. We're going to grab this bucket, take it to the top of the hill with us for uh, backfill, backfill purposes. We've got one small trench. We need to go from the, uh, where we stopped into the top of the hill the other day, over to the basement we dug. We're going to go ahead and get that water line stuffed in so they're good to go there. And then from there, it'll be a matter of getting our mess cleaned up and calling it a job. So, up the hill we go. Alrighty, so I got up here at the top of the hill. If you guys can see this trench, we got it dug over to where we dug the basement the other day. It's good to go. We got the trench that heads down over the hill this way. I need to dig a little bit of a pit right here at this intersection. Two foot bucket on the Hyundai would definitely do, but. Uh, it's down at the bottom of the hill, so we're just gonna go a little overkill on this one and give him a 42 inch pit. They've gotta put a yard hydrant, a valve, and a T right here. Uh, yard hydrant for yard water, I guess. Uh, the T is back behind me where the 850s park. At some point, they're gonna put a garage or a shop there, and then obviously the uh, valve and the other line will go over to the house so we're gonna have a little bit of spaghetti junction right here at some point but we'll get him a nice little pit dug here and then uh, we'll be on to uh, backfill and Todd's got a good section of the pipe in down below there we'll take a little bit of this and put around this transformer they put in yesterday make sure it don't go anywhere I hate to say it, but it looks like I'm going to be doing this with a little shovel work here at some point.
I don't see nothing wrong with that. That'll make a nice little intersection for the plumber there. Him and Matt are down there making the connection at that T, getting ready to head on up the hill. I'm gonna get set up. We're gonna get this thing backfilled. All right, guys, I closed up shopping here again because the dang wind, the dang wind picked up again, but Matt is way down to bottom of the hill. He's getting the flatter part with the skid steer. I'm up here on top of the hill. I'm gonna try to do Aaron come in here yesterday the skid steer and he was a little bit on the struggle bus trying to get some of this backfield so I think what I'm going to do it's just about as easy to walk down through here with the excavator I can backfill that trench on the back stroke backfill this trench on the front stroke and then uh, we'll kind of uh, probably come up through here and either track it in with the skid steer or, or track it in with the uh, excavator on the way back up the hill but Nothing real fancy. It's this smooth face bucket does work pretty good for this. I'm gonna work my way down through here. I promise you guys by the time we're done, I will give you a tour of everything we've done, including the water and the uh, water and the electric. But this hill gets kind of steep, kind of annoying down through here. Glad we have this part done. All right, guys, I have made it down the hill backfield. The top half is really slick. The bottom of the middle section, not so much. Uh, Matt, me and Matt have made a connection here. I did not video a whole lot of the backfilling because I just did a 45 minute live on YouTube while it's actually backfilling. So if you guys want to go back and uh, see that, you know, I believe that one actually turned out really well from the on the job. Backfilling scenario, whoa, hello. And unfortunately my batteries are about dead from doing the live. So uh, I'm gonna work my way back up the hill, kind of pretty this up a little bit. And I want to make sure I save enough battery to kind of give you guys uh, a little once over, a little quick once over of everything we've done here. So stick with me for a little bit. I'm uh, I'm just gonna track this in. I've got a couple of these uh, drainage terraces. I just want to make sure everything's good here. Everything drains out and nothing jumps over. So we had to dig through them. We had to dig through them to get down through there. So. Um, Todd's down there. The plumber just turned the water on, I believe. So, uh, getting everything, everything good to go from there. Power's already on. So yeah, it's a little bit steep down through here. If you guys watch that live feed, you'll see her. But uh, we just about got her, boys and girls. We just about got her. All right, I believe we finally got her. Finally got our whoop, guys. Check this out. Top of the hill, and we do have, I believe. Oh yes, that is water. And I'm not going to stick my finger in the panel, but trust me, we got electricity. I promise you. So a quick little tour of everything we did. This is that transformer uh, they set the other day. I didn't get a whole lot of video of it because we were working down over the hill. It's 900 feet from here to the pole. That is the primary line. It's 42 to 48 inches deep jump over 10 feet and we have the water line that come up the hill inch and a half pecs uh it's about 36 to 40 inches deep it comes up tees and then we actually dug a trench over to the basement and uh we're a little ahead of the basement guys they're supposed to be here today but they didn't show up so didn't get any video out of that this particular home here is going to come up into a 400 amp meter base you can disconnect for future garage shop disconnect for future house so the wind has died down. It's a beautiful day. This is a beautiful job site. I'm going to track down the hill and uh, try one last attempt to get a pretty drone flight over this. But uh, basically, we are done here, guys. Driveway's done. Basement's dug. Utilities are in. Rocks at the top of the hill. The only thing we have left to do at this point is haul equipment out and head on to the next one. So let's see if this birdie will fly, and uh, we'll call it a wrap.
Well guys, there you have it. The wind finally cooperated and we got a drone flight in here at the end, able to see the entire job site from the driveway build to the basement dig and the utility line trenching we did. And this drone shot actually does a pretty good job of kind of showing the elevation changes there. But uh, that's going to be a wrap on this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, we shall catch you guys on the next one.